Last month's paper launch of the GTX 1080 and GTX 1070 reignited the GPU debate in a big way. Performance-wise, these new Pascal GPUs were immensely impressive, particularly when it came to efficiency. As drool-worthy as the benchmark results were, for most gamers, NVIDIA's new high-performance GPUs are irrelevant. It's a bit like when Ferrari announced a new car, granted, on a much lesser scale. By that, I mean you can enjoy watching the Top Gear boys slide it around sideways on an airstrip, but that's about as close as you get to ownership. What you ultimately end up with is the reasonably priced car, a graphics card just capable of delivering performance needed to enjoy the latest games at reasonable quality settings. With the RX 480, AMD wants to take the reasonably priced car, carry out some weight reduction, dump it on its guts, and give it a shot of nitrous. The result being a 200 ish dollar GPU, not a car, capable of delivering very playable 1440p performance in all of the latest games. In an effort to try and steal some of Nvidia's thunder last month, AMD were keen to announce their upcoming Radeon RX 480 graphics card during Computex. The highlights included the $200 price tag and strong hints of greatness in terms of performance. Now, this price announcement definitely generated a heap of speculation as to what the resulting performance would be. I won't cover the RX 480 specs and reference card in this video. For that information, please check out this video here. I know you're all very keen to get right into the benchmarks, so I'll make this quick. Now as always, you guys can find all the graphs at the Hardware Unbox website, which will be linked in the description. After looking at the results from a select few games, I'm going to heavily analyse the data from 20 plus games across multiple resolutions to get a clear idea of how the RX 480 stacks up. Before I do jump into the benchmarks, here are a few quick notes. All tests were conducted using my GPU test rig, which is built inside the Corsair Carbide 600C with an Intel Core i7-6700K clocked and locked at 4.5GHz. For a full list of the system specs, please check the video description. You'll also find a detailed video index there as well. Finally, all benchmarks were conducted after a 10 minute warm up period as this is sufficient time to get these cards up to their maximum working temperature. As always, I'm using reference AMD and NVIDIA graphics cards unless specified. I'll be focusing on the 1440p resolution for the discussion, but I'll quickly take a look at the 1080p performance as well. First up, we have Doom with the nightmare quality settings. The RX 480 was slightly faster than the i9-390 here, and therefore much faster than the GDX 960 and i9-380. Increasing the resolution to 1440p sees the RX 480 average 65 FPS, making it 6% slower than the GTX 970, but 5% faster than the i9-390. It was also 48% faster than the GTX 960 and 63% faster than the i9-380. For those wondering, it was 32% slower than the GTX 1070, which is a very good result for AMD given the price. Even with the epic quality settings enabled in Overwatch and 100% scale rendering, the RX 480 is able to push just over 100 FPS in our action-packed bot benchmark. At 1440p, a very smooth 67 FPS was delivered by the RX 480, making it just 4% slower than the R9 390 and 8% slower than the GTX 970. Unfortunately, the RX 480 wasn't quite as impressive at 1440p as it was at 1080p in Overwatch. For those wondering, it averaged 35 FPS at 4K and 45 FPS when using the Ultra preset. The RX 480 impressed in the division, delivering R9-390X like performance, though to be fair, for whatever reason, very little separates the mid-range cards in this test. Now at 1440p, the margins widen and the RX 480 falls behind not just the R9-390X, but also the vanilla 390. Still, it was 2% faster than the GTX 970 and 68% faster than the GTX 960. For Hitman, I'll focus on the DirectX 12 results since they're the most relevant. Here the RX 480 averaged an impressive 72 FPS, making it just 3 FPS slower than the R9-390X. At 1440p, the RX 480 remained quite strong, matching the R9-390 and beating the GTX 970 by a convincing 36% margin. Sadly, Just Cause 3 doesn't play that nicely with the Radeon graphics cards. The average result isn't bad, but stuttering is noticeable and results in a much lower minimum frame rate than the Nvidia graphics cards. Whereas the GTX 970 never dropped below 59 FPS, the RX 480 goes as low as 46 FPS. The RX 480 was 4% faster than the GTX 970 on average, despite a much lower minimum frame rate. Still, when compared to the R9 390X, the RX 480 performed very well, delivering similar results. Here we see the RX 480 has no trouble delivering highly playable, smooth performance in Fallout 4 using the maximum in-game quality settings as the frame rate never dropped below 71 FPS. The RX 480 matched the GTX 
970 at 1440p with an average of 56 FPS, making it 2% slower than the R9 390, 65% faster than the GTX 960, and 44% faster than the R9 380. Car thieves are going to love the value the RX 480 delivers. Here we see a very punchy 94 FPS at 1080p, making the RX 480 slightly faster than the R9 390X. Once again, we find the RX 480 to be a little less impressive at 1440p. Here it fell well behind not just the 390X, but also the 390, as well as the GTX 970. Still, it was 54% faster than the GTX 960 and 37% faster than the R9 380. Here we see the RX 480 struggling to keep up with the R9 390 and Armour 3, which is something we haven't often seen. The only other game where the RX 480 has been notably slower was The Division, though the margin was less in that case. The RX 480, for whatever reason, didn't perform as expected in Armour 3, as it was 23% slower than the R9 390 and 14% slower than the GTX 970. This could simply be a driver issue or perhaps the lack of bandwidth when compared to say the R9 390 is an issue here. The RX 480 looks to be finishing on a high note with an average of 55 FPS at 1080p, making it just 2 FPS slower than the R9 390X and 5 FPS faster than the GTX 970. At 1440p, the RX 480 still remains strong and although it was just 1 FPS faster than the R9 390, it beat the GDX 970 by a much more convincing 24% margin. It also crushed the GTX 960 by 91% margin for good measure. Here we see the RX 480 allowed for a total system power consumption figure of 235 watts. This is an average taken from multiple games. This places the RX 480 on par with the GTX 970 and GTX 1070 in terms of consumption. This means it's similar to the GTX 970 in terms of efficiency, but miles behind the GTX 1070. The RX 480 was on average just 3-4% faster than the 970, at 28 nanometer part mind you, and yet it consumed a similar level of power. Frankly, for this new 14 nanometer GPU, I find the result a bit disappointing, particularly given AMD's bold efficiency claims. As we just saw, the RX 480 isn't as power efficient as we might have thought, and as a result, it does run rather warm, reaching 81 degrees after a few minutes. For a card that consumes similar levels of power to the GTX 1070 and 970, AMD sure have stuck a little heatsink on it. That probably explains why the fan spins up quite a bit under heavy load. I wouldn't say it's loud, but it makes itself known, whereas the GTX 1070 remains near silent. Still, it's worth keeping in mind that AMD and Nvidia reference cards almost always run at around 80 degrees as the temp target, so this isn't out of the ordinary. So that was a small 9 game sample of the 23 games tested, so in a moment we'll check out how the RX 480 compares to its competition on a much grander scale. But first, I'd like to touch on a couple of other things. The DirectX 12 testing is limited I know, but it isn't entirely my fault there just aren't that many good DirectX 12 games yet. That said, I do plan to create a DirectX 12 performance video in the near future, so keep an eye out for that. Also, I realise overclocking hasn't been covered yet. Typically, I cover the overclocking angle of these new GPUs in a separate video. However, I'm having a serious amount of trouble pushing the RX 480 past 1.3GHz, which is pretty shocking given what I was expecting. I've spoken with a few other reviewers and they're also facing extreme limitations when it comes to overclocking this card. At the time of creating this video, I'm yet to start work on the overclocking video. Instead, I'm holding out for some kind of magical overclocking setting from AMD, though they haven't suggested there is one, so it's looking more and more like the RX 480 overclocks about as well as the Fury X. While I try and come to terms with that realisation, let's move on and crunch some numbers. For the RX 480, the goal is to surpass the R9 390, and in a way it has, if only just. At 1080p, we found it was on average 2% faster. The only games where performance was noticeably down were Crisis 3 and Armour 3. The RX 480 was considerably faster in Batman Arkham Knight, though I'm yet to determine if this was a result of the new beta driver. Moving to 1440p was a little troubling for the RX 480, and it's now 2% slower than the R9 390. Armour 3 caused big issues at this resolution, while Crisis 3 and Star Wars Battlefront also proved difficult. Comparing the RX 480 to the GTX 970 saw big wins in the DirectX 12 titles, though to be fair, AMD has a significant advantage in Hitman regardless of the API being used. For the most part, the RX 480 had the upper hand in this battle at 1080p. The RX 480 struggled against the R9 390 at 1440p, but fares well again compared to the GTX 970, where it was 4% faster on average. For those of you running AMD's last generation $200 GPU, the R9 380, you can expect around a 40% performance boost at 1080p when upgrading to the RX 480. On average, we saw a healthy 44% increase in frame rate. 
GTX 960 owners stand to gain even more performance from an RX 480 upgrade as we found on average 59% more performance over Nvidia's previous generation $200 GPU. Now for the comparison many of you have been waiting for, the RX 480 versus the GTX 1070. This is both an intriguing and yet ultimately pointless comparison, but for interest's sake, let's make it. At 1080p, the RX 480 was just 32% slower than the GTX 1070, which is quite good given it'll cost at least 37% less once the GTX 1070 drops down to the MSRP. At today's prices, the RX 480 should come at a bit over 40% cheaper. Things don't change much at 1440p. Here the RX 480 was 33% slower, so again, not a bad result for AMD. The only issue with this comparison is the power consumption. Despite dropping a little over 30% performance, the RX 480 still consumes the same amount of power. On that note, let's take a quick look at the performance versus power consumption data. The further a data plot is to the right on the x-axis, the faster the frame rate, while the higher the figure is on the y-axis, the greater the power consumption. So in short, if you're a GPU, you want ideally to be as low and as far right on this graph as possible. Doing just that is the GTX 1070 which consumed just 1.96 watts per frame. The RX 480 was considerably worse at 2.9 watts per frame, placing it pretty well on par with the last generation's GTX 970 and behind the GTX 980. Now on our final scatter plot, we're looking at the cost per frame data. Again, being further to the right indicates greater performance, while the lower on the y-axis, the better, as this means the cheaper the cost per frame. As you can see, the RX 480 just beats out the GTX 970 and crushes the previous generation $200 GPUs in terms of value. This for me is the RX 480's saving grace, the price, though granted it's hardly revolutionary looking at the GTX 970. This is particularly true once you consider how well the GTX 970 overclocks, which I'll be sure to look at in my overclocking video shortly. Honestly, right now I'm not entirely sure how I feel about the Radeon RX 480. I'm definitely disappointed with a few things, namely the complete lack of overclocking headroom and the power consumption. For a price versus performance angle, the RX 480 is quite good, though those cheap GTX 970s getting around aren't helping. I think sending reviewers the $240 8GB model might have been a mistake on AMD's behalf. Based on what I've seen when comparing the R9 290X 4GB and R9 390X 8GB graphics cards, I can't possibly imagine a 1080p or 1440p scenario where the $40 premium for the 8GB version makes sense. This might change in the future, but paying 20% more for a budget card in the hopes that it might be worth it down the track probably won't pay off. You're better off putting that $40 in the bank as a down payment towards your next upgrade. Had AMD not gone this way, the RX 480 would look considerably more impressive in our cost per frame analysis and would have probably made the $260 GTX 970 irrelevant. For now, we'll just have to wait and see. As you're watching this, I'm probably down at the local computer shop trying to get my hands on a 4GB model. My RX 480 Crossfire video will be coming really soon, so if you haven't yet, hit subscribe to get notified of that one. I'm your host Matt as always, and I'll see you guys next time. YouTubers like me depend on your support to continue improving the quality and content of our videos. To support the channel directly, consider becoming a patron to also get access to a heap of cool rewards and exclusive giveaways. Also, don't forget you can check prices and buy the products I looked at in this video through the Amazon links in the video description below. Thank you kindly for supporting me and the Hardware Unbox channel, it means a lot to me and I really do appreciate it, and in return I'll continue to work as hard as I can to keep producing the content you enjoy.